Welcome to the Bleak Midlife Bulimia podcast with guest Ulis Carlson, international author, yoga therapist, and soul coach. Hi, everyone. I am Laurieann. I am the host of Bleak Midlife Bulimia. Today, I am so excited to have Ulrika. I know it's Ulis. I'm not sure which one. Sorry, I should have asked that first. But and then she's an international author, yoga therapist, and soul coach. And her books are amazing. I met we've met before and uh, just a great story that we're really i'm looking forward for her sharing with us so my first question will be what made you become a soul coach wow a good question and first of all thank you Lorian, for having me great to talk to you again and um, happy to be here yes a soul coach i guess my main reason why i have studied holistic disciplines for so long and became a soul coach is that I, for the first like 35 years of my life, was not connected to my own soul. And this caused a lot of suffering and misery in my life. When, because when you're not connected to your soul and to, to the spirit and to the essence that is you, how can you possibly live a full life? And then you have a lot of this energy in searching for, acknowledgements or love or appreciation appreciation from the outside world instead of giving it to yourself. So I, I guess my own searching for becoming whole uh, is also what I give to others. That's sort of beautiful what you said there because it's uh, you know for our listeners out there we all know that quite often we are people pleasers but that also relates to we are looking for acceptance from the outside instead of accepting ourselves for who we are. And that is what you're talking about is that disconnection. Exactly. And, and we, we are looking, basically we are looking for the wrong things in the wrong places. Absolutely. So it sounds easy, but uh, the journey to, to realize that and to, to do the search within you, that's, that's when it's become interesting. So I know that you, uh, in our previous meeting and the other podcast, we were talking a little bit, which is why I was interested because of everything you talked about. But also you said you had a little bit of time where you were struggling with Bolivia. And I don't want to get big into that, but if you can just tell us a little bit about that aspect. Yeah, actually, I had a lot of... Um... <laughs> both anorectic thoughts and bulimia and also, how do you say it in English? Autorexic. Like when you, um, when, when you do heavy exercising and you, you still have the mindset that you're being fat. Um, so actually I was only quite a short while uh, being a bulimic because I found it so disgusting to puke. Uh, so I couldn't do that for a long time. So I thought that I had the solution by becoming the authoretic uh, or orthorectic. And for me, it's like the same thing. It's just like different shapes and forms of the same problems or the same um, issues that you're carrying. And this I had for, you know, like decades being obsessed about my weight and how I looked like and how I was being perceived from the outer world and how to control everything that I did and by heavy, heavy exercising. And this was also, this was also somehow easier and not easy at all, if you know what I mean, because you could fly under the radar and people were appreciating you for your, you know, that you had a six pack on your belly or that you were very fit and lean. So but the problem was the same and I was upholding like the suffering and the misery within with this type of behavior, but it was more approved of in the outer world. You're absolutely right about that. And that's a sad part of it. Um, that's why you can hide for longer and, and, but you're lying to yourself. That's the scary part of it, which I always say the worst part of my bulimia when I was bulimic was that it went against my values. Because I was lying to others, I was lying to myself, and I don't like lying. So it's going against my values. So not a healthy thing. So exactly. tell us a little bit, right? Tell us a little bit about your book. 
the 247. The 247, thank you, Lorian. This is it, 247 AM, the journey home to my heart. So this is where I, in a quite raw and very vulnerable space, I really describe my journey from being depressed and burnout and suicidal and all the things that I needed to face and transform from within, like all these um, fucked up behaviors that I had and um, thinking that that was normal, normal to have this uh, dislike and discontent and um, hatred towards myself, that it was something that was normal, which is not but we do have the illusion that it is because um, it's, also, it's also a disease where you are pretty much alone in your head. Uh, and even though it looks good on the outside, you, you feel like the, you're the most loneliest person in the world. And it's also so much connected with a lot of shame and guilt. So I'm writing about my journey uh, and, and I'm a Swede, so I started to write this book in Swedish, but then somebody told me that you really, really need to write it in English because this is going to be an inspiration for a lot of people that struggle with mental illness, depression, and regarding, because you can have so many shapes and forms of depression, and by being bulimic or having anorexia or, or orthorex, orthorectic, it is only like one shape and form. Uh, and this eventually catapulted me into a long-term burnout and depression and sleeping disorders, which I'm writing about in this book. And I'm writing, this book is dedicated actually to my children because they literally saved my life back then and there. So it's dedicated to my children that they unknowingly saved my life. And also, I'm writing the book because if I can inspire, you know, just like one person, then the ripple effects will even, you know, will, will benefit so many more. Because this person is a part of a family, is part of a network and, or a job or anything. So um, it's, quite, it's quite heavy, uh, but it is a feel-good book because I'm alive, right? I'm here, otherwise I would not be here. So uh, I get a lot of mails from, from this book and people thanking me that I have the courage to be so vulnerable that I am in this book, sharing my experience and how many fears that I had to face to turn inwards instead of looking outwards for this appreciation or acknowledgement or to be the good girl that I needed to, to transform it and to face it and to become me who I am beyond all the illusions and the unconscious programs that I had with me. It's interesting that you say the fear of looking inward and it is uncomfortable, which is why I believe a lot of times that, that bulimia is a comfort place and it's not having to look inside of yourself, but you do also have to take ownership of certain things um, and stop the denial. And that is very fearful to look in. I could do it now, but it was scary when I started the whole process. Like, I don't really want to see me. I want to try and have people see me the way I want. I think they want to see me. But for me to look at myself in the mirror and going, you know, you're awesome. You're great. And yeah, there's certain things that we could probably change because you have to be kindly, you know, constructive criticism towards yourself. Exactly. And exactly. And to take radical responsibility for your own situation, for your own behavior, for your own action. That is really, really scary. And that's, Lorian, also my perspective on what is going on today, that we have so much distractions, like from everything to our cell phones, to social media, to, to, um, to medi medications, to drugs, because there's so much distractions that can keep me out here in the illusion that I'm safe, that I'm good enough. And then to, to turn inwards and to face all these things that you have really tried so hard to suppress in the first place, it takes really a lot of courage. And the word courage comes from French, that cœur means the heart. So it takes a lot of efforts and a lot of courage to 
to face yourself and to to be more in the heart with love and compassion towards yourself and others wow and i speak french and i never even picked up on that you haven't <laughs> oh okay no i know courage but i didn't yeah. ever think of the car yeah at the beginning of it so so Thanks. it takes it takes a lot of courage to be in the heart and if you if, if I speak about like eating disorders from the yogic perspective, since I'm a yogi and I've been studying this for like 28 years of holistic disciplines, there's always something wrong with the um, relationship, with the attachment to your parents when it comes to eating disorders. Like you haven't had the, the unconditional love that we are all worthy of from your parents, from your childhood, even though that there's nobody to blame because in the yogic perspective, nobody is to blame because we all do the, the very best we can with the resources that we have at the moment. But so as we have been talking about to face that you, first of all, you have to admit that uh, I have this behavior. You have to make it conscious because if it's unconscious, then you can, then you're not aware. And how can you change anything if you're not aware? So you have to step up and take radical responsibility for and owning the fact that I have an eating disorder. It's not like you are an eating disorder. You are not anorectic. You are not sick, but you have a behavior that is sick. And just to step up and to own it is like the first step. And that's one of the hardest because you can find so many circumstances and so many distractions so you can go on and on and on for decades without facing it or owning up to it and then also to to face all these suppressed emotions that comes with this i think we were talking about this in the other podcasts like these frozen emotions that a lot of us people have causing non-flow and a lot of blockages that causes eventually you know illnesses diseases and um lack of alignment with with the soul so all these things we are really creating for ourselves so if i first of all if i created this this um, behavior then i can change it right because if i am the creator in my life and i'm creating this experience of being bulimic or having anorexia or whatever, then I can also create another reality that is more aligned with who I want to be. Uh, and you're absolutely true. And that alignment is so important. So, um, yeah, I like that uh, you were talking about getting into yoga and how much it helped and the different levels that you've got into that. That's, uh, that's just amazing. Um, now, I don't know if you want to move on to it, but I know you're also the author of a second book as well that I found fascinating when you spoke about. First one, amazing, because it does help with the alignment, but this one was fascinating in its content in regards to what you were talking about. Yeah, thank you. It's this one. Holy fuck and sacred water and the secret connections to everything. And this book is actually is channeled uh, so it's written also in english and it's channeled and the, the alternative perspective on how we can look on the world as we see it today with what is going on and holy fuck is the sacred sexuality like, like we are we are you know coming from generations and generations of love you are the result of generations before you that have made love and here you are so sacred sexuality is so much more than just a fuck or or sex sacred sexuality is also about the life force about the source that we all stem from the source uh, and we all have we all are souls having a human experience and with this come all these things that we've been talking about. So if, if I'm allowed, I just want to read a little bit from the behind so you can have your own idea what it's about. Okay, Absolutely, please. So how the fuck can sacred water, the secret connections to everything, it is bold, cocky, and politically 
politically and socially incorrect. It is divinely channeled and imprinted with the sacred codes. This book will either have you say, fuck yeah, or it will piss you off, or maybe even both. This book is not for the common man or the common woman. It is for the new generation of brave, passionate and curious beings who know they came to earth to make a difference and they're ready to take action now. A new era has arrived and with that more confusion and fear than ever before. This book reactivates a path of releasing the old so we can co-create a new thriving future together. It contains very raw and vulnerable personal stories, scientific information, ancient wisdom, taboo topics, and conspiracy theories. This book can help you to understand the importance of purifying your own water and using your passionate fire to live your true potential. Holy fuck and sacred water could be considered a theory of everything. Life is a multidimensional journey to master empowerment, freedom and flow in our everyday lives. We can master these by unifying our inner spark with the sacred water. This then creates the magical life force within us that we call the holy fuck. And this book, what we are talking about here to, to, to turn inwards and to face yourself and to clear out all these unconscious programs that made you have a sick behavior in the first place and that they also come generations back. So you are both a mix of all the divine love that you come from, but you are also the results of everything that is and have been unresolved for generations back. So these programs that we all have uh, and regarding to what we're talking about in this subject, subject here, this topic, they are so unconscious and they're not even ours from the beginning. Like we can have inherited these programs of not being good enough or wanting to be seen or wanting this approval and acknowledgement and this love. Because basically being a living being, a divine being that we all are, is that we all want to be seen, we want to be acknowledged, and we want to be loved. And therefore we are looking and searching for this love and this acknowledgement out here and this approval, while, as I said, we are looking for the wrong things in the wrong places. We need to move inwards and to clear our muddy waters because we consist of 70% of water, right? And in this water that we consist of, there are these unconscious programs like virus lying and uh, and it makes us that we are not aligned with our soul, that we believe that we are the thoughts that we are having, we believe to be the bodies we live in, we believe to, to be our emotions, but we're not. We're like spiritual beings having this human experience. It's fantastic. So now, you I... are... Sorry. Sorry. I was just remembering because when you were talking about that, the other thing that amazed me was where you were saying everybody needs to ascend, but you need to descend. And yes, exactly. I don't know if you can go over that just briefly, but I found that powerful when you spoke about that, because you're right. Everybody keeps saying ascend up, you know, lift yourself, but you were talking about descending as well. Yeah. Thank you, Lorianne, for reminding me. And that is so true in the Western countries that we live in. It is very much even in our language and the way we think that we have to be enlightened. And we, you can listen in the language like, I want to climb the ladder of my career. I want to have a higher education. I want to rise above. And this is what I, what I write in my books also, what I call the immature, the unconscious masculine, because it's the ascending flow. It, it moves upwards in the body. So it comes from the roots and it moves upwards. And it, if we are too much in the immature or unconscious masculine, then we are too much up in our heads, right? Believing that we are too fat or we are not worthy or 
we are not worthy of being loved unless we look in a specific way. That's only illusions. And that's when we are too much up in our head. We are not rooted, not grounded. And many yogic traditions also sort of, um, sort of um, enhances the importance of being enlightened. But if you are just up in the head or you have a mental spirituality for instance then you are not whole because in the body there's also that descending flow from the universe down into the body that makes you here in your own body connected to your heart connected to your root chakra connected to gaia to mother earth and if you are connected to gaia if you can truly feel that you are one of gaia's beautiful children and how can you ever hurt another living being, right? It is when we are not in the descending flow that takes us down into our heart, where the, the ascending masculine and the descending feminine meets. So how can you possibly love yourself unconditionally? And how can you possibly heal if you are not working with the descending flow? So they, you need to increase, enhance the conscious masculine and increase, enhance the conscious feminine, the descending flow that takes you down into the body. And in the body, it's where you heal. To feel all of your traumas and to feel all your wounds, your accumulated stress, unresolved feelings, and that is how you heal. You cannot heal it by mentally just think about it or have positive affirmations or being mentally sort of enlightened. You need to be enlightened in the body also from the descending flow. And, and for me, that is so big. That is so big because it's if each and one of us individually would be in balance with the feminine and the masculine, regardless of gender, it's like yin and yang. We all have it, right? So if I would be in perfect balance within me, how could I ever harm myself or anybody else? And that means, so if I want to heal from this behavior or this illusion or this dis-ease, um, not being at ease in your body, you have to heal it through the body. And that means also that I will never harm anybody else. I will never rape or violate or treat anybody else bad or not Gaia. But we in the Western world, we are not there. We're too much up in the head, too, too, much, too eager to solve problems from the head, to plan ahead, to move up and all of this bullshit, really. So we need to descend. Uh, to connect with our hearts and, and that's where healing starts to, to take place that was one thing that i was telling my sister about you because we were talking about that earlier and i found you know your incredible ideas and i, I was telling her about you know we we clear our bodies of toxicity through you know flushing systems with drink singing or fasting or whatever but i believe that that's one another thing that you spoke about is well that's all fine and dandy but you're not doing anything if your soul is not or whatever the case is is not healed it doesn't matter how much toxicity you try and remove from your body that still sits there yeah and and the the portal to your soul from the yogic perspective is through the hearts and as i told you Lorianne, we consist of 70 percent our water, like more than 70%. And also our blood is the water element that is connected with the sexual chakra. And uh, the sexual chakra has been, you know, for generations and generations and generations has been polluted, you know, by religion or politics or the way we live. Uh, so every thought that I'm having is either polluting or clearing my inner water and and within the blood is also our intention who, who we really are and if if you have so much unresolved traumas or accumulated stress or feelings within the body 
you, you, you do need to get rid of the toxicity because it's also, you know, in your DNA, what's there? You have water in the DNA. So within your DNA, there's re remembrance of all these previous pollutions that you, yourself, or people before you have placed in the water. So you really, really need to, to do it. And not only by drink clean, but also to clear out the memories from the cells from all these pollution. I love that. I think that's just, that's again very powerful. I really believe that because when I was telling my sister, because I never really thought of it that way. I said, no, neither had I. <laughs> so uh and and I do want to say, you know, I do know that we say that there's a parental part of eating disorders, but for a long time they were um I'd say, so media i wouldn't say just social media because that was before my time so media whatever the case it was was giving the person who has bulimia not bulimia but has bulimia i love the way that you said that um an opportunity to blame someone else again that pointing outwards is my mother it's my father it's my upbringing it's all of that not to say that any of those components can't be a part of a reaction to going to that, but unless you can, you need to take some identity. So when you were talking about DNA too, if there is any of the DNA that might've been causing this as well, that was passed down from your parents, that's not something that they did on purpose. Like, you know? No, very it, unconscious. Right. Very unconscious. And, and in the, the, previous pod podcasts i think i was mentioning that that we are like 95 percent with unconscious programs so we have five i repeat five percent of consciousness and from these you know poor five percent i am in the illusion that i take conscious decisions that is good for me and sustainable for me and others in a long long-term and uh, long-term perspective but but um you can have so many of these things from previous generations where maybe it actually began with that there was not enough food somebody in a previous lifetime might not have enough food so and then so then these programs around food might have started that we have to you know be careful what we eat or whatever and then now in these times where we have abundance of food and people are eating too much because uh, eating too much and being obese is just the polarity to what we are talking about here it's the same coin but the different polarity it's like yin and yang and we all have it we all we all have each aspect within us right so and then also for for good girls or good boys that want to have the being perceived in a certain way it's also about hiding or trying to hide a low self-esteem but you do it with a high confidence so you know that you are good you're so bloody good at controlling stuff so you can even control your own body uh, you know abusive or in in, in a in a loving way because either way use or abuse it's just you know one one letters difference right yes. um so it's also this this programs of low self-esteem that i'm trying to compensate with a with a high self-confidence that i am somebody that i am somebody if i do this or if i have this certain way of look or my appearance is perfect or whatever thing but this is just illusions and this is just signs and symptoms that we are too much up in our heads thinking too much believing our thoughts and taking ourselves far 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 too serious and if you have created this behavior then you can recreate it right so that's that's the benefits of being from source that you are the divine creator of your own life if you believe that you are fat then you will be fat if you believe that you are not worthy then then you will be right so whatever you believe you will be right 
And you're right, because even if you aren't fat, but you perceive yourself to be fat, you will be fat, just even visually, which is interesting. Like, even if you're yeah. not, you'll perceive yourself as that, which is crazy. Exactly. That's how the mind works, right? It's like, yeah. really? <laughs> and this is also some, um, because there's so many strategies that each and one of us can use to distract ourselves again from being whole and being in our unique energetic frequency because everything is energy everything is frequency and energy so and if you want to heal you also need to work with the in increasing your consciousness and this means that when you feel all these fears and when you face these programs and these illusions these limited beliefs or mindsets whatever then you also make space you are releasing the old so you can receive the new so my motto, motto when i work is relax because most of us in the western society we are in the sympathetic nervous system all the time meaning that we are always on the go always on the move to the next thought to the next project to the next activity to the next uh, regarding this program counting calories like we are always on the move to our future which means that we are very rare here we're never here we're always planning ahead what to eat what not to eat how to do what not to do etc et and oh i lost the thread now <laughs> I lost her. I lost her. To take new actions. And so first of all, yeah, this was it. <laughs> so I need to relax. I need to move myself from the state of being in the sympathetic nervous system, which means that I'm always on the go. So I need to relax coming into the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is what I do in my line of work. Like if you think that you have this garden with full of weeds, first you have to pull up the weeds with its roots, right? And then with this space, when you have released the old, then you can receive the new. So first you need to relax. And from this relaxed state, you can transform and face your, your fears, your programs, and release the old. And there you can receive the new and create a new future. So it sounds really easy, but it's not always so, uh, it sounds simple, but not, so, not always so easy. It's true. Relaxing is not a good, like an easy thing for me to do. I have, even when I'm relaxing, I have a hard time relaxing. That's how bad it is sometimes. I'm yeah, just, most of us do. Yeah. Most of us do because we are also programmed. This is, is in our unconscious programs that we are programmed to be on the move, to climb that ladder to run ahead, to plan ahead, to solve our problems mentally. This is a program. And this is in the uh, unconscious ascending flow. That's why we need to move into the descending flow where it's okay to practice, to relax, because most of us are very unpracticed. Yeah. yeah. Even most people become easy. stressed when they are supposed to relax. It's true. And then you need it the most. <laughs> um just quickly i want to say by the way thank you very much for clarifying self-esteem and self-confidence and that there's self-consciousness too they're all very different things that people seem to put into one pot but they're not so thanks for clarifying that and i would like if you can please tell our listeners where they can find you thank you and you can find me at uh, www.ulis it's u double l i s K A R L S S O N dot com. So it's uliskalson.com. Thank you so much. And thanks again for being here. I really appreciate your time and lovely to see you again. And they can get your books as well on Amazon. Yes, the yeah. books are on Amazon, so you can get it there. Uh, so it's uh, Holy Fuck and Sacred Water, the Secret Connections to Everything. And for you who is suffering from mental illness or is living with somebody, it's 2.47 a.m. the journey home to my heart.
And thank you, Lorianne, for having me and for this talk. And I, gosh, we could talk. I mean, this was just scratching the surface. We could go really, really deep into this also. So thank you for your patience and for inviting me. And also thank you for listening. Thank you. And I'm sure I'm going to have you back so we can go further down and deep and uh, let our listeners know more. Thanks again. Take care. Thanks. Thank you for listening to this episode. Be sure to visit me at bleepbulimia.com.